Hello everyone. Today we will learn about temporomandibular joint. Now this will be the first lecture, first video of the series in which we will understand everything which is needed to be learned about temporomandibular joint. So let's get started. Temporomandibular joint is a ginglimoarthroidal joint. Now what is ginglimoarthroidal joint? Ginglimoid means joint which has opening and closing type of movement is called as a hinge joint. And that is a ginglimoid joint. So our TMJ has hinge movement that is opening and closing type of movement. It not only have opening and closing movement, it also has a translatory movement. That means it doesn't just open and close, it also translates. Means it moves in a straight line. And that's why it is called as ginglimo arthroidal joint. Arthroidal means moving in a straight line. Second is it is a compound joint. Now what is compound joint? Compound joint is any joint which is made up of three bone surfaces. For example, our TMJ has articular surface of temporal bone, articular surface of condyle and we have articular disc in between. Generally compound joints are made up of three different bones. In case of TMJ, we have articular disc in between them. This disc is non-ossified bone. That means it is made up of dense fibrous connective tissue. Now we can see this TMJ in two different planes. First sagittal plane and second is coronal plane or anterior plane. In sagittal plane, this disc can be divided into three parts. First is anterior border. Second is intermediate zone. This intermediate zone is devoid of any blood vessels or nerve supplies. This is the area where condyle articulates with this articular surface of temporal bone. This is glenoid fossa. And posteriorly we have posterior border. This is sagittal plane. Now let's discuss sagittal plane in detail. This is the view in sagittal section. We have superiorly we have articular surface of our temporal bone. Inferiorly we have articular surface of the condyle. This is the condyle and in between them we have disc. Disc is attached posteriorly with posterior lamina and anteriorly with anterior lamina. Posteriorly we have two different lamina or two different tissues for the attachment. Superiorly we have superior retrodiscal lamina or superior retrodiscal tissue which is elastic in nature and this is responsible for the retraction of the disc when condyle is relaxed or our TMJ is relaxed. This superior retrodiscal tissue attaches posterior superior posterior border of the disc with tympanic plate. Inferiorly we have inferior retrodiscal lamina which attaches the disc to the back side or the posterior border of our condyle. This is made up of collagenous fiber and they are not elastic in nature. In between them we have large venous plexuses and they are filled with blood. So they provide the blood supply to the TMJ. Anteriorly we have superior attachment and inferior attachment. Superior attachment attaches the anterior disc to the anterior margin of articular surface of temporal bone and inferiorly it attaches the disc to the anterior margin of the articular surface of the condyle. Also we have anteriorly lateral pterygoid muscle that is superior belly of lateral pterygoid and inferior belly of lateral pterygoid. Superior belly attaches anterior surface of the disc to the pterygoid plate, lateral pterygoid plate and inferior belly attaches the neck of the condyle to the lateral pterygoid plate. So this is in sagittal section. This is a simple anatomy of sagittal section of TMJ. In coronal section this is the structure. We have superior border again, articular surface of temporal bone. Inferiorly, we have articular surface of the condyle. Disc is situated in between them. And in between them, in between superior articular surface and the disc, we have this space. This space is called as superior cavity, superior joint cavity. And this Joint cavity is responsible for the translatory movement of the condyle. We will discuss it later. 
Inferiorly between the disc and the condyle, we have inferior joint cavity, and this is the disc. So these linings, that is, these are articular linings, are called as synovial linings. Now, why they are called as synovial lining? Because they produce a fluid which is called as synovial fluid, and this is why our TMJ is called as synovial joint. These are different kind of synovial joints present in our body, and TMJ is one of them. Now, what is the purpose of this synovial fluid? Synovial fluid has two important functions. First is, it is the medium for providing metabolic requirements. See, a disc do not have any kind of blood supply. So, the exchange of the nutrients can be done with the help of this synovial fluid, which are released from this articular surfaces. Second, it acts as a lubricant. As we know that, TMJ is constantly moving, there is constant opening and closing type of movement is there. There must be some kind of lubrication so that there is no friction in between the surfaces. So we need a lubrication. Now the mechanism of lubrication are also of two types. First is boundary lubrication and second is weeping lubrication. Boundary lubrication is the primary mechanism of lubrication and it acts in a moving joint. That means when, suppose our condyle is moving anteriorly, then the, all the fluids situated in the boundaries will go there. It's called as boundary lubrication, the, which is the movement of the fluid which is present in the boundary toward the joint when joint is moving. Second type of lubrication is weeping lubrication. Now what is this weeping lubrication? It acts when the joint is not moving. For example, when joint is in compressed state, suppose we are clenching our teeth tightly, at that moment the weeping lubrication will be in function and this is also responsible for metabolic exchange of the between the disc and between other components. We will discuss the weeping lubrication in detail. This weeping lubrication prevents the sticking of our disc to the condyle. So this is the introduction of the TMJ. Now let's understand the histology of temporomandibular joint. Okay, so this is the histology of articular surface of TMJ. Now articular surface includes both our articular surface of temporal bone and articular surface of the condyle. Let's understand the articular surface of the condyle. So let's zoom in to this area. This is the disc. This is inferior cavity or lower cavity, inferior compartment and this is the surface of the condyle. Okay, this articular surface can be divided into four different zones histologically. The superior most or uppermost zone is articular zone. This articular zone is made up of dense fibrous connective tissue and it is not made up of hyaline cartilage. And these fibers are arranged in bundle and they are parallel to the surface. Why this uh, articular surface or articular zone is not made up of hyaline cartilage? It has two advantages of being fibrous and not hyaline. First is it is less susceptible to aging breakdown. See our TMJ is constantly under load and hyaline cartilage do not have flexibility. So it will break down. So because of this, we need flexibility in the tissue and that is why this surface is made up of fibrous cartilage. Second is it has better ability to repair. See hyaline cartilage is like a glass, right? It do not have much better ability to repair. On the other hand, our fibrous connected tissue has better ability to repair and that's why the articular surface is made up of articular zone is made up of fibrous connective tissue. Below this, we have proliferative zone. Proliferative zone is completely made up of cellular tissue and it has undifferentiated mesenchymal cell which will dis differentiate into further chondrocytes and chondroblast. Third zone is fibrocartilaginous zone. Here the collagen fibrils are arranged in crossing and radiating orientation. So they are arranged radially and also crisscross. 
because they are arranged radially they are parallel in the direction of force so they can withstand the force they can resist against the compressive and lateral forces because they are arranged in parallel to the direction of force and last is our calcified cartilaginous zone this calcified cartilaginous zone are made up of chondrocyte chondroblast and intercellular matrix intercellular matrix is produced by our chondroblast and they produce different type of components of the matrix these includes collagen proteoglycans glycoproteins and enzyme now this proteoglycans are interesting why let's understand these proteoglycans are made up of one protein core attached to which are glycosaminoglycans so these are protein core and these are different glycosaminoglycans these protein core along with glycosaminoglycans are called as proteoglycans now these proteoglycans are attached to hyaluronic acid and forms a complex molecule this complex molecule is intertwined with collagen fibers and produces a matrix of this calcified cartilaginous zone now this matrix is hydrophilic in nature why because this hyaluronic acid this complex molecule is hydrophilic in nature that means it binds the water it attracts the water so when load increases water which is bound to this complex molecule which will be released so this molecule which really will release the water when the joint is in a compressive state but when loading decreases that means when the load decreases the joint is relaxed in in that moment the fluid will again be attracted to a this complex molecule so this has kind of pumping action this concept is called as pumping action of the molecular pumping action of the joint now why it is important because it, this is the mechanism of whipping lubrication we have seen that in whipping lubrication it acts only when the joint is in compressed state so when joint is in compressed state in increased loading this molecule will release the water and this water this water from this area will go to the cavity the joint cavity and act as a lubricant this is the mechanism of whipping lubrication now let's understand the anatomy of our tmj first we will understand the innervation of tmj tmj is innervated by trigeminal nerve which is fifth nerve and this is innervated by mainly the mandibular branch of trigeminal nerve the main nerves are auricular branch of the the mandibular nerve and auricular temporal branch of the mandibular nerve so these are two important branches of tmj other than that some branches of the mesenteric nerve and deep temporal nerve also supplies the tmj after the innervation let's understand the vascularization of the temporal mandibular joint this is the tmj which is covered by our ligaments uh, the joint is surrounded posteriorly with superior temporal artery inferiorly inferiorly with maxillary artery and anteriorly with middle meningeal artery if we remove this ligaments inside the tmj the tmj is supplied by anterior tympanic branch and deep auricular branch of our maxillary artery after the innervation and vascularization we have ligaments now tmj is made up of five different type of ligaments three are primary ligaments and two are accessory ligaments first ligament that is primary ligament is collateral ligament or discal ligament now why it is called as discal ligament because it attaches the disc to the condyle they are collateral and also called as discal ligament these are this lateral discal ligament and medial discal ligament the lateral disc discal ligament attaches the lateral part of the disc to the lateral part of the condyle whereas medial discal ligament attaches the medial 
part of the disc medial end of the disc to the medial end medial part of the condyle so it forms the inferior cavity of the joint see these ligaments are responsible for the division of this cavity into superior and inferior joint cavity these are true ligaments and are collagenous connective tissue they restrict the disc away from the condyle they restrict the movement of the disc away from the condyle and they are responsible for the hinge movement why because they constantly binds this disc to our condyle so they completely they completely binds the disc with the condyle so disc cannot move away from the condyle so condyle has only one type of movement that is hinge movement when disc is close to it and that is why these ligaments are responsible for the hinge movement of the condyle and that is why the inf inferior cavity of the joint is responsible for the hinge movement of the joint and they are vascularized and innervated and that is why they produce pain and sensation second is capsular ligament now as name suggest capsular ligament produce forms a capsule around the joint so this is the capsular ligament this capsular ligament produces a capsule around the joint and it surrounds and encompasses the joint tmj superiorly attached to the temporal bone along the border of the articular surface of the mandibular fossa this is the mandibular fossa and it is attached to the articular surfaces the border of the articular surface of mandibular fossa and articular eminence inferiorly it is attached to the neck of the condyle so it completely surrounds the tmj it resists the force that tend to separate the articular surfaces so the collateral ligament binds the disc to our condyle whereas the capsular ligament binds the condyle with articular surface of temporal bone so this is the function of capsular ligament and as it encompasses the tmj it also encompasses the synovial fluid so this was collateral and capsular ligament third is temporomandibular ligament or lateral ligament the temporomandibular ligament or lateral ligament is divided into two parts outer oblique portion and second inner horizontal portion outer oblique portion is attached to the posterior border of the condyle and anteriorly it attaches to the articular eminence and anterior portion of articular surface of temporal bone the inner horizontal portion attaches the disc to anterior part of articular eminence now this oblique portion resists the op excessive dropping of condyle that is op excessive mouth opening how does it resist the excessive opening let's understand see this is the attachment of the oblique portion it is attached to the posterior border of condylar neck now when we open the condyle when we open very wide posterior border or posterior segment will move further posteriorly and this will stretch this will stretch the ligament and that's why this ligament will resist this stretching it will resist the movement posteriorly so when condyle rotates beyond a limit the oblique portion can't be straight because it is made up of collagenous tissue and that's why it pulls the condyle forward and this is why it is responsible for the protrusion of the condyle so this ligament is responsible for the forward movement and down downward movement of the condyle now why do we even need forward and downward movement let's understand see during the evaluation our posture got from four leg or quadrupedal to bipedal that is we went from walking with four leg to walking with two leg that is straight posture so when ancestor were walking with four legs there was a gap in between mandible and the posterior tissues so there was a space available so there was only opening and closing type of movement possible and there was no hindrance in between this part so we could easily open and close mandible but when 
we got from bent to straight posture the gap reduced we went from this to this so here we do not have much space for the opening movement if we open very much if we open beyond the limit this mandible may injure the posterior structures posterior tissue only option was to retract the mandible anteriorly so this the retraction of the mandible is done by our lateral oblique portion of the temporal mandibular ligament and that is why it is very important for the evolution it played a very important role in the evolution of a human being second is inner horizontal portion this inner horizontal portion so it prevents the posterior movement of the condyle and the disc see it is attached to the disc it is attached to the lateral border of the disc and the condyle and so it protects the disc anteriorly and that's why that's how that's why it protects the retrodiscal tissue and it protects the lateral pterygoid muscle from over lengthening or extension see retrodiscal tissue is constantly pulling the pulling the disc backward so this inner horizontal portion pulls the disc anteriorly and that's how it prevents the retrodiscal tissue and lateral pterygoid muscle from over lengthening or over extension so when there is sudden trauma the lateral ligament is so strong that it breaks the condyle from the neck and that's how it prevents the condyle from entering into the middle cranial cavity because otherwise the condyle would have entered into the middle cranial cavity and it would have injured the posterior tissues but it breaks the condyle and that's how it prevents the injury to the posterior tissues which are present be behind the mandible so this is the importance of ma temporomandibular ligament last is phenomandibular ligament and stylomandibular ligament as we have discussed they are both accessory ligaments and they limits the excessive protrusive movement or opening movement of the condyle of the mandible the phenomandibular ligament is attached to the spine of sphenoid to the lingula of mandible and the stylomandibular ligament arises from the styloid process and it is attached to the posterior border of our mandible to the angle of the mandible so this was the anatomy the innervation the vascularization and different type of ligaments which are present in the temporomandibular joint in next section we will understand different muscle of the mastication and or we will understand the opening and closing cycle of the tmj thank you